This presentation is intended for HVAC technicians only. It is not intended for homeowners. Please take a second to read this disclaimer. Welcome to Zen HVAC, a common sense approach micro training video series. What you need to know, when you need to know it, in 10 minutes or less. This episode, how to calculate rooftop unit airflow. Why do you care? Well, let's see, condensate carryover, refrigerant floodback, coil frosting, cracked heat exchanger, heat exchanger, corrosion, poor air distribution, system noise, and even hemorrhoids. Yes, it will cause hemorrhoids. How? Simple. Everything above is a pain in the butt. First, to calculate airflow, we're going to need a few tools. One, we're going to need a measuring device, tape measure, ruler, I don't care what. Second, we're going to need a magnet helix or a U-tube manometer. And third, the most important, we're going to need the manufacturer's product information. Let's get started. Here's a rooftop unit, no duh. We're going to start the fan section. And what we're going to do in the fan section is first make sure the belts are tight. That's step one. Belt tension is critical because if the belts are loose, all our readings are going to be garbage. Step number two. While we're in that compartment, we're going to record the RPM off the motor's nameplate. In this case, it is 3,500 RPM. Pretty simple so far, right? Step three, we're going to measure the shivs. Do not call them pulleys. We will beat you. These are shivs. Now, in the blower shiv, we're going to measure the outside diameter. You can see where the two red lines are. Pretty straightforward. This one happens to be 12 inches. Then we're going to measure the motor shiv. This one's a little bit more important. You'll notice if it's an adjustable shiv, we're going to measure where the back of the belt is inside the shiv. In this case, it's three inches. Now we're going to do some simple math. Ready? Motor RPM, 3,500 times motor shiv diameter, three inches, divided by blower diameter, 12 inches, equals 875 blower RPM. Told you it was simple. Next, we're going to take some static pressure readings. We need holes in the ductwork. Small, little, tiny holes. See where the fingers are pointing? Just enough to hold a piece of tubing up against for magnetic gauge. We don't want to stuff the tubing into the duct. We just want to hold it tight up against the hole. We're reading static pressure. Now we're actually going to measure the pressure using our magnetic or water U-tube. The supply duct is obviously going to be a positive pressure. The return duct is going to be a negative pressure, as you can see by the fancy plus sign and minus sign in this picture. Step 8. We're going to add those two pressures together. So we have negative 2 tenths of an inch plus positive 5 tenths of an inch equals 0.71 total external static pressure, or TESP. Step 9. We go to our product data. We open it up until we find the blower chart. There it is. You see the line at the top? That's static pressure. It goes one-tenth of an inch all the way up to 0.8. We have 0.71. We find it. Ooh, there's 0.7. Fantastic. Now we draw an arrow down until we find our RPM on the blower, which happened to be 875 in our case. So we go back, and there's 854, 895. So 875 falls right about in the middle. We draw a line over to the left. There's our CFM category. 2,000 to 4,000. We're falling right in the 2,500 to 3,000. I'm going to call it 2,700 CFM. This rooftop unit is moving 2,700 CFM of air. Easy. Points to remember. External static pressure is used for package equipment only. Commercial air handlers do not use total external static. They use internal. That'll be another training video. This method gets you close. It's close enough for troubleshooting and field commissioning. Let us know what you think. Let us know how we can improve it. And more importantly, what topics would you like to see in the future? Thanks for watching.